In one of my recent videos, I shared with you guys that I'm going to be buying a new Subaru here very soon. And in this video, I'm going to announce which model that is, why I chose it, and walk through the order process to share with you guys who are looking to buy a new Subaru what that looks like. We're even gonna jump into Subaru's order system and I'm gonna show you what the estimated arrival time is and what that looks like when you place an order for yourself. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to make weekly Subaru videos and if you enjoy that type of content, please click the subscribe button down below and comment down below with any questions you have. So first we're gonna start with going to Subaru.com. This is actually where I start once somebody has determined what car they want, and I'm trying to help somebody build one out for themselves. The Subaru website, they just updated it recently, and it makes it fairly easy to actually go in, choose the model and trim level you want, and then go and price out the car. We're gonna start with build and price, and it's gonna show all of the Subaru models available. There are quite a few to choose from, and to be honest with you guys, I had a tough time choosing which model I wanted because I like just about all of them, and they all have their own unique characteristics that make them a nice car to have. So we'll start out with the Subaru Forester Sport. This is actually the most guessed option that you guys guessed, and that makes sense because I have made a lot of Forester content in the past, and while I do like the Forester in a lot of ways and what it offers, it was actually just quite a bit too big for me. Interior space just felt too open. So I wanted something a little bit more compact, but something that was still an SUV. A lot of people also guessed the Crosstrek, another car that I do really like and something that is small and still has SUV capabilities with the ground clearance, but just didn't have all of the offerings that I wanted at this time. I actually ended up going with the Subaru Outback, the 2023, quite a few people guessed this as well. If you've seen any of my previous videos months ago, I did actually mention that if I ever got a new Subaru right now, the Outback would be the one that I would go with. And I almost actually bought a 2022 Outback, but I'm glad I held out because I'm excited for what is coming on the 2023, specifically with the Onyx Edition. So with the Onyx Edition, you get the cool looking sporty appearance package with the black wheels. They did do the black window trim as well, so it used to be chrome. And of course they did the redesign on all the 2023s with the front end. I do really like that. Gives it a more rugged look. And the new wheel design, the new 18 inch black alloy wheels look really good in my opinion. And then one thing that I'm really excited about is that I was actually able to get a 2.5 liter in at the Onyx edition. So in 2020 through 2022, all those Onyx trim levels came standard with the 2.4 liter turbo, which is a very fun car to drive. And if you like something that is more comparable to like the filling and the powertrain of a six cylinder, then that's a good option to go with. There are some people who feel like the 2.5 is lagging in power, but for me, especially coming from a, I think my car is like a 1.4 or 1.5 liter, it's a hybrid, so it's not a very big car, a big engine, and definitely doesn't have a lot of torque or horsepower. So it comes down to personal perspective, but for me, the 2.5 is sufficient. I don't need the extra towing capabilities that you get with the turbo. You get 3,500 pounds of towing on the turbo Outback, whereas you get 2,700 pounds on the naturally aspirated non-turbo. Outback and I'm just gonna be using a trailer hitch for our bikes We're gonna get a bike rack and put bikes on the back So I'm not going to need the towing capabilities But what's nice about having the 2.5 liter option is that it's better on gas than the turbo and It's a lot less expensive than the turbo option So that's something that everybody can be happy about especially right now in today's environment where gas prices have been incredibly high so for the color of the outback that i chose i was really torn between a few i used to really want the autumn green but i decided that i'd probably get tired of a color like that over time so i decided to stick with a more neutral tone I knew I didn't want black because while black does look really good on cars, it is incredibly hard to keep clean. And I wanted something that had some contrast between the body color and the black cladding that was all around the car. If you don't like the look of the cladding, then maybe go with a darker color like the black or the dark gray because you're not gonna have that contrast there. 
But if you're like me and you do really like the ruggedness and the look of the higher wheel arched cladding and the front end, then go with a lighter color. So I actually opted for the crystal white pearl. It's a really beautiful color, especially in the sunlight with the metallic flakes. So I'm excited to film up close with that car once it arrives. So that's actually the color I chose. And then as we all know, if you're familiar with the Onyx, you don't get an interior color option. It just comes standard with the gray StarTex interior with the lime green stitching on the seats. For the Onyx 2.5 liter, the non-turbo option, you have an optional package. This package includes the power moonroof, the TomTom -tom navigation, and the reverse automatic braking. I actually opted out of this because Whenever I last had a car with the power moonroof, I hardly used it. The navigation is nice to have, but I'm gonna utilize my navigation through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which will display up on the screen. And then for the reverse automatic braking, I, I'm gonna have a backup camera, which I've also never had before. That comes standard on all the new vehicles. And I like to think that I pay attention when backing up. And while it is nice to have that system to automatically apply the brakes for you when in reverse, I opted out of it. It just wasn't worth the $1,845 add-on. For the accessories, the first thing I added was the wireless charger, which is kind of funny because if you've ever heard me talk about this in the past, in the previous generation models, I always said it wasn't really necessary and it wasn't worth the money. The reason why is because if you have your phone that you're using for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you had to plug your cable into the charge port to be able to connect to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which simultaneously charged your phone. However, now in 2023, they have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. And so having the wireless charging pad is nice to have. So I actually did get that for my car. Quick note on this, if your phone is not compatible with, with wireless charging, this won't work. And also if you have a really thick case, this may not work. So I have a thin case and my phone is new enough where it does have wireless charging capabilities. The second thing I added was the cargo net. So the cargo net is something that some people may not find useful and it just depends on your situation and your own personal use and, and how you use your car. If you plan to travel in it and you load your car up quite a bit, and most certainly if your car has a power tailgate, which mine does have, then you're probably going to want to have a cargo net or something to keep things contained when your power lift gate opens up. You can't stop that lift gate unless you click the button real quick. So if it's loaded up and if, if it's not secure, it'll fall out. So that's why I got the cargo net. At a minimum, one thing that I always encourage people to get for their Subaru, even if they want a bare bones base model, is get the all weather liners. You're gonna thank yourself later. I personally added those myself because it's inevitable if you have stuff in your car, even if you don't eat or drink in your car, if you've got dogs or children, somebody's liable to drop something or get something water or liquid on the carpet of material. So these cargo liners have little trays and so if things are spilled in there, it's not gonna roll off and seep into your carpet, it's gonna stay contained where you can easily take that liner out, hose it off and throw it back in. In combination with all weather liners, something that I always like to tell people about is the cargo tray in the trunk area and your rear seat back protectors. Now my car comes standard with the cargo tray, so depending on your trim level, it may not have that as a standard, but the rear seat back protectors are never a standard on any Subaru. So I did add the rear seat back protector because Chelsea and I are getting a dog here in about a week. And when we put her crate in there or have her in the vehicle and we have the seats down, we wanna keep that carpet of material from getting dirty or wet. I also got the auto dimming exterior mirrors with the approach lighting. One, because it's nice to have auto dimming mirrors, both on the outside and the inside of your car. But then the other nice thing is having that approach lighting. It looks modern and it has a functional purpose. When you are approaching your car at night, the lights will shine down so you can see as you're getting into your car. I added the splash guards as well, just as something to hedge against any potential rocks or sticks that might get thrown up when we do take our car off-road. We're not going off-roading per se, and we don't typically take gravel roads very often where rocks tend to get thrown up. But if we do go hiking or something like that, you're typically not on a well-paved road. And so in those situations, I just wanna help keep the, uh, the car protected. And then lastly, I did go ahead and opt for the trailer hitch because Chelsea and I do ride bikes. And when we travel, we want an easy and secure way to carry our bikes. 
I thought about doing the roof rack setup, which I have had in the past, but the downside to this is having to lift your bikes up on the roof. Now, the Outback's not that tall, but it is still a hassle. And in combination with that, the wind noise is kind of terrible with your bikes on the top. And if you go through a drive-through, you don't have as much clearance. And then lastly, uh, the fuel economy. You do see slightly less fuel economy when you have stuff on your bike because there's more drag, just more resistance to cause your car not to be as good on gas. So we're actually going to get a bike carrier for the back. I'm gonna actually make a whole separate video on this to kind of talk about the pros and cons, some options you guys have, some things I've used in the past, and things that I really like about the hitch setup for carrying your bikes when you're traveling. So if you were to go build your car out like I just did on Subaru.com on the summary page, at the very bottom right, there's an option to save it as a PDF. You would email this to your salesperson and they would be able to place your order for you. So you can't place it directly from Subaru.com. A Subaru salesperson from a dealership actually has to place this order. I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. So now that we're in the order system, we select the model, the year, the trim level, and the color that you have chosen. From there, it will populate the order availability. In this case, it's showing that the Outback Onyx Edition in white is expected to arrive in October. And if we look in the middle here where it says my pipeline, this is the car that I actually ordered for myself. So I ordered it a few weeks ago. It's expected to arrive in September. So that means in September, I will have my new Outback Onyx Edition that I can film more videos with. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to click the like button. I hope you have a great day. Leave comments below with any questions you have, and I will see you in the next one.